Welcome to A plus BI again. This is the second video for the day. This channel is all about complex numbers. And in this video, we're going to be solving an equation with a complex number and its conjugate. Now, this problem is kind of interesting because it touches upon two different things, which I'm going to show you. Okay. So we have Z plus Z bar I equals one plus I. What is Z bar? Z bar is the complex conjugate. What is a complex number? Z equals A plus B I is a complex number. And it's also the name of this channel. Did you know that? Hopefully you did. Now, if Z is defined as A plus B I, then Z bar, which is the complex conjugate, is defined as A minus B I. Basically, you negate the imaginary part. If you're new to complex numbers, because of the stuff that I've been talking about, it doesn't make sense to you at all. Like kind of sounds like gibberish. And go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made nine videos on basics of complex numbers. I also have another channel, which is called Cyber Math. Check it out as well, okay? And let me know what you think. So we're gonna go ahead and replace. Now, when I kind of wrote this problem, I thought about a second method, but I can really come up with something nice. Maybe you're gonna let me know. Actually, you know what? I think I can find a second method. I just thought of something real quick. So we're going to start with the first method, okay? The first method is calling Z A plus B I. Okay, let's do it. Now, when you replace Z with that and Z bar with A minus B I, don't forget to multiply by I and set it equal to 1 plus I. Now, let's go ahead and distribute and simplify this. And don't forget, if you forget everything about complex numbers, please do not forget that I squared is negative 1. I basically is the square root of negative 1, but complex numbers have two square roots. But negative 1, the square root of negative 1 as I is defined as the principal square root, which is a special way to define it so that it kind of agrees with the real world. Make sense? Otherwise, we have, we're going to have into, we're going to run into a problem. So if you distribute I, you're going to get AI, like artificial intelligence. And then BI multiplied by I is going to be BI squared with a minus sign. It's going to be minus b i squared, but i squared is negative 1, so this is just going to be plus b. All right. Now, the left-hand side, we need to put together the real parts, a plus b, and the imaginary parts are also a plus b, i, and this is equal to 1 plus i. What does this give you? This gives you two equations, right? This is 1 and this is 1. Wait a minute. Aren't they the same thing? Yes, they are. So this is basically good, nice, but too nice, don't you think? So we would rather have uh, another uh, solution or another equation so we can solve it for A and B. Well, we can still solve it, but you're kind of looking at a system of equations and this comes up a lot in algebra classes. So if you're taking algebra, planning to take it, this is an important concept, a system with infinitely many solutions. Why? Because you're talking about the same thing, like a plus b equals 1, a plus b equals 1. So there's a, only one equation, and you can basically play with the values of a and b. By the way, a and b are real numbers. That's how complex numbers are defined, okay? So we have infinitely many solutions. Good. Now, here's the second concept. Remember, I told you that I was going to talk about two things. One was solving the equation, right? Should I solve the equation and then maybe talk about the second thing? I think so. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. I know some people can't wait, but stick around. Second method, I just thought of that because like, there must be another way to do it. And I think we used that method before. All right, thanks to my viewers, I learned a lot, a lot from them. So the second method is uh, basically, I want to come up with another equation so I can solve this as a system. And that's going to come from conjugating both sides. What does that mean? If you have like two complex numbers and add them up and conjugate the sum, is the sum of two conjugates. This goes for subtraction, multiplication, division, all operations. It's always true. And the conjugate of the conjugate is the number itself. And if you conjugate a real number, or if z bar is z, that means z is real. It's a real number. Make sense? Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and do this. Keep the first equation and rewrite the second one. Rewrite the second one because I'm going to conjugate it and get a different equation. Let's go ahead and conjugate this, like a big bar and big bar. Now, I'm going to conjugate z, z bar. Conjugate z bar, it's going to be z. Conjugate i, 
and that is going to be just negative i, right? And if you conjugate 1 plus i, that's going to be 1 minus i. Okay, great. Hopefully this made sense. Notice that the plus sign stays. On the right-hand side, the plus sign turned into a minus sign because I had to conjugate 1 plus i. Is it conjugate? Okay, maybe I should say complex conjugates, and then the verb is to conjugate. Anyway, I'm not a grammar police, so I wouldn't care too much about it. So the second equation gives us something like z bar minus z i equals 1 minus i. And let me go ahead and copy the first one. z plus z bar i equals 1 plus i. How do you solve this as a system? Can I eliminate one of these? Sure. z can be multiplied by i in the second equation. And then we can eliminate uh, z. And it's okay. We don't have to eliminate z bar. Let's multiply everything by i here. And that gives us zi, i squared is negative 1 again, and this becomes i minus 1. And then top equation is z bar minus zi equals 1 minus i. And now we're going to go ahead and deal with these two equations because z bar is going to cancel out. Wait a minute, weren't I trying? Wasn't I trying to? Okay, I probably made a mistake somewhere. Oh, okay, here we go. Everything cancels out. Okay, okay, fine. I'm like confused for a second. Zero. And then here everything cancels out. Uh-oh. I wasn't expecting this. Were you? Yes, we were, of course, right? Remember the first method? Let's not say it. But this means what? This means that we don't care about your Z. It can be anything. As long as, as long as what? <laughs> it satisfies the first equation. So the first and the second equation are the same. In other words, anything that satisfies the first, which we found with the first method, is going to work. So, let's go ahead and talk about the second concept here. I forgot to include the graph because that would be nice, but I just came up with the second method, so what can I do? I was not prepared for this. So, in the argon plane, this represents a locus. You know why? Remember what we found with the first method? We found a plus b equals i. Let's just assume that z was not written a plus b i. Sorry, a plus b i. For a second, we're just going to uh, you know, betray you and use x plus y i. For locus problems, this is necessary. And now, then, you're going to have x plus y equals 1. And what does that mean? It means that y equals 1 minus x. And guess what? That's a line with a slope of negative 1, something that looks like this, right? In other words, this is a locus problem, and all solutions to this equation lie on this line, which is given by this equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to watch Cybermath, and bye-bye.